Hey guys, welcome to the show. Um, I'm excited about this episode because it's got a lot of really good information in it. Um, this is a solo episode. Uh, it's just me talking. However, I think some of you guys will find this very helpful. Um, and hopefully it's kind of evergreen. Uh, and you can go back to it and reference it later because this episode is all about antelope application strategy and picking units uh, specifically in Wyoming um, because it's a great state. It's known for great antelope hunting and antelope hunting is a great way to start DIY Western hunting. So if you're looking to get into DIY Western hunting, this is a great episode for you. I am leading a trip out there this year. My uncle, my cousin, and my dad all love hunting, but more casual type hunters don't have the time and resources and energy and really desire to, uh, you know, research and plan a trip like this. So I'm taking the lead on it. Um, and this will be really helpful for anybody who wants to step out of your comfort zone and try to head out West and do some Western hunting. Um, so I just want to mention if you're listening to this, um, it still will be helpful, but if you watch the YouTube version, I actually do a screen share and you, I literally walk you through the process and you can see it on the screen of buying your preference points, applying for your tags, looking at different units and using the different resources, including Go Hunt and the Wyoming Game and Fish website to pick your units. So there's a lot of great information in here. And like I said, you can literally see it on the screen. So I think this will clear up a lot of um, questions for guys out there who might want to get into it, but are a little intimidated by the system. Um, the reason I'm putting this episode out now, I do mention it later in the episode is, um, I believe the deadline for buying preference points for next year for antelope, elk, and mule deer, etc., is October 31st. So I wanted to put this out <clears throat> in time for guys to be able to listen to this episode, get excited about going antelope hunting and go in and buying a preference point this year before October 31st for next year's hunt. So you can get on it. And, you know, I talk about it again, but you know, I'm going into this hunt having only one preference point and entering the special draw. And I'll get into all that stuff about the special draw and all those details. But um, I hope you can watch this episode, learn a lot from it, and um, it should be really helpful for you guys. So we're going to jump right in and um, enjoy it. All right, hello and welcome guys. Welcome back to the show. This is the Hunter's Quest podcast. My name is Hunter, I'm your host, and today I want to go through with you guys um, kind of my strategy for applying uh, for this antelope hunt that I'm doing this year, as well as how I picked units and made sure that I got drawn, basically. Um, because I'm leading a group out there this year and um, it's kind of a bucket, bucket list hunt for my uncle and um, you know my cousin and it's you know as a as the guy kind of organizing the group as the party leader as they called it you know um, I was more interested in getting drawn for something even though it wasn't or even if it wasn't like you know the best unit ever or whatnot we were going in with only one point um, so I just want to go over the strategy with you guys on how I came to decide on which unit to pick, um, never having been out there before, and um, and got drawn in on a first choice unit that's actually a really decent unit with just one point. And um, you know, this might not, you know, when this releases, um, it's going to be pretty far from next year's antelope season, and I get that. But I wanted to do this episode now so that guys have time to buy their preference point for 2022 because uh you know like i always say the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago second best time is now so i want to release this in time to where hopefully this inspires you shows you that it is doable and you can get out there buy some points and next year with just one point get on a decent antelope hunt in Wyoming and have a lot of fun and, and have a really good shot at filling a tag out west. So I'm going to jump right in here. Um, like I said, 
the first and most important thing is start buying points right now. Um, I believe that points in Wyoming and Montana are available from July until the end of October. So, um, you know, if you're listening to this, I highly recommend going right now to uh, the Wyoming and Montana Fish and Game sites and buying your points for 2022. So I'm actually going to run through that with you right now real quick. So I'm going to start recording here on a Zoom meeting. Give me one second here. I'm actually going to start just to show you guys. Just go to Google. And I'm going to search Wyoming preference points. Pretty simple. Um, and you'll see on mine, it's the second one down, Wyoming Game and Fish Department, apply or buy. If you haven't yet, you want to create an account, which is easy to do. Make sure you write down your all your information. I actually, what I started to do when I got into this stuff, I got a little uh, moleskin notebook. And this is just all my Western hunting info in here. And I just have it broken down by state, all my different logins. Some states have numbers you got to remember. Um, just any kind of information broken down by state all in one place. I like to have it written down. I also save copies of everything like receipts, licenses, all that stuff in a folder on my computer. But I like having, you know, multiples so I have handwritten I normally print the stuff out and keep it in a file folder and I keep it on my computer so um, lots of redundancies but that's just my personality and I think it's smart so anyway so I'm gonna sign in here um, you know I already I already have an account so I'm just gonna sign in and it'll ask you to verify your information or put in your information um, and then you come to this screen and you'll see right here, very simple, preference points, buy preference points, continue, accept, are you a resident? I am not, continue. Now you'll see all these are already grayed out because I've already purchased um, my deer and elk points. Um, and one thing I found out this year was if you draw your license, so for example, last year I bought my antelope point, this year I drew my license, and so you cannot buy a license and a preference point for the same species in the same year. So that means I'm not eligible to buy an antelope preference point this year, unfortunately, but that's okay, just you know, do something different next year. But um, anyway, all you do is hit apply for these, um, I'll do one right now for uh, bighorn sheep or moose just to show you. Um, I personally have decided to not buy bighorn sheep preference points in Wyoming. I may regret that one day, but with the amount of licenses and points and stuff I'm applying or, you know, starting to stack up all over the West, it just became a little taxing financially and as you can see a preference points $150 and it takes usually a very long time to draw this tag I'm sure you probably know so I I just kind of told myself I'm just gonna I would rather just save up and, and maybe one day do a doll sheep hunt in Alaska um, instead of doing this 150 bucks every year for like 20 years and maybe drawing so anyway but that's what you do um, hit continue um, you can add donations uh, I do recommend doing that for you know, uh, donating to wildlife if you're so inclined. Um, but I'll just hit this for now, continue without donation, add a shopping cart, check out now. So again, I'm not gonna buy this point right now, um, but that's just to show you it's very easy to do. Um, this is just Wyoming, but uh, you can, like I said, buy Wyoming or Montana points for elk, mule deer, antelope, um, moose, bighorn sheep, whatever you want to do. Um, I kind of stuck with a big three for now in these states, elk, deer, and antelope. Um, but, you know, just kind of going back, you know, I probably should have mentioned this from the beginning, but um, the reason I started with antelope, and I, I've mentioned this before, is 
it's a it's a great way to start western hunting um this will not be my first western hunt but it'll be my first hunt as western hunt as a um an organizer a party leader or whatnot um and uh you know it's something that my uncle and my dad and my cousin really wanted to do and we want to do it together as a group so uh physically it's um not a super demanding hunt um it's a target rich hunt if you look into uh uh, antelope hunting, you know, especially Wyoming with the rifle success rates are very high. There's a lot of animals, even in some of the lower point units or, you know, lower, uh, yeah, easier to draw units. Um, and you know, just the style of hunting, you can, you can cover a lot of ground in your car, glass from roads. And, and from what I'm, what I've been hearing, even if you're willing to just hike a couple miles off the road, you in some cases can get a lot of animals all to yourself just cause, guys are so used to just road hunting. And so I personally like that. I like getting off the road a little bit. I like hiking. Um, but at the same time, like I said, I'm dragging my uncle out there, my dad, and they're in decent shape, but they're not training hard every day. And, uh, you know, I'm not trying to put them in a situation where they're just hating what they're doing. So, um, so I am, starting off this antelope hunt and we're going to just kind of take it easy and, and hopefully fill some tags. So that's why I started with antelope. And so I highly recommend, even if you can't in 2022, uh, do this hunt, just go ahead and start building points. Like as soon as I got back from Alaska and I realized like Western hunting is something I want to get into and do for the rest of my life. I started buying points in as many States as I could, for as many species as I could, um, just to start even just playing the long game. That's what you got to do. So if you're listening to this and you haven't yet, and you're even thinking about being interested in going antelope hunting or mule deer hunting out West, even if it's in the next five years, go to Wyoming, go to Montana, start building your points. Um, so anyway, um, that's, that's just showing you how easy it is on Wyoming to get your points. Um, the next thing you do. So like I said, we went into this um, as a group with one point. And how they do it in Wyoming is they will take the average of every point total, every person's point total in your group, they will average that together and that will be your points as a group. So just to you know, keep it simple, if it's you and you have one point and your buddy has two points, you enter as a party, you enter in with one and a half points. So. Um, if you are hunting with guys who are maybe not super tech savvy or, or whatever, like I was, um, I actually walked my cousin and my uncles through buying their points. Um, I think I even got, got them for my dad, for him, um, uh, just cause he's busy and I just want to make sure we all had our points. So do what you gotta do. If you're order, organizing a group, you know, get, get those points for your friends or your family or whatever. And so you can all go in with the same amount of points and, um, you know, uh, applying as a group will not decrease your success success uh, likelihood of getting drawn. So don't be afraid to enter as a group. And this is again a great hunt to do as a family with some buddies. You know, even even with younger younger guys or kids, uh, you, you know, newer hunters, wives, etc. It's an approachable hunt. So um, great place to start. So. You know, get your get your friends, family, whatever, get on the same page, buy some points, and then um, and then you're gonna start thinking about application strategy. So, and this is this is pretty fun, um, and it can be daunting, but you just kind of have to be systematic about it. And there are a couple tools that I used that I would recommend. So, um, I went ahead and joined Go Hunt. And I will show you right over here. I'm going to start from the home screen. I joined Go Hunt as a Go Hunt insider. I do think it is worth it to do so. Um, so, you know, some guys like uh, Hunt and Fool. There are other options available now um, that I don't even know about. But when I was starting off, Go Hunt was just the best one that I found. Anyway, whatever. I use Go Hunt. So, log in. I'm logged in here. I'm going to go to Insider. And they break it down by state. So I'm going to go down here to Wyoming. 
And this is coming from knowing nothing about Wyoming antelope units. You know, I started, I started putting some feelers out on social media. Hey, does anybody know about animal antelope units? And that's never a bad thing to do. Um, and you might get some tips on that. So you could reach out to folks on your social media, ask if anybody's hunted Wyoming, knows anything about antelope units that, you know, that can be a good place to start. But I've noticed when you start asking people for specifics about units, it's good to show that you've at least done some homework. You're not just like, okay, where should I go? People are way less likely to want to help you if they feel like you've done nothing. If you come to them with some um, showing that you put some time and just a little bit of effort into it, I think they're more likely to help you. So um, anyway, and, and it's kind of fun too to, to learn all this stuff. So, so Go Hunt, Back to Go Hunt has some cool filtering options here. So we're in state, Wyoming. I'm going to select a species, which I'm going to, of course, go to antelope. Right. Um, then it has over here, it has all my units broken down. Um, you know, and, and you can click on any of them, get detailed information. Uh, but we're not going to do that just yet. Um, so residency, I want to put in non resident regular. This is where I started. And the difference between a regular and the special draw it can be kind of confusing. It's really not. So regular, I think, costs about 300 bucks for the license for, to apply. Okay. And this is not exact numbers, but it's about 300 bucks. Special is about 600 bucks. But you are drastically increasing your draw odds by going in the special. So it just depends on what you want to do, what your financial situation is, um, what you're willing to pay. Basically, if you're willing to pay a little extra, you got a better chance. And the cool thing is you can see the draw uh, breakdown, draw odds breakdown regular versus special, which can help you. Um, so we did pay a little extra. I talked to my group into paying a little extra to do the special draw. And to me, it's worth it because um, we got in on a unit that, like I said, is a really, I mean, it's not the best unit out there, but it's a, it's a very solid unit for just coming in with one point. And so it was our first choice unit. I'm glad we did that. So I'm going to, but when I start my search, I start with non-resident regular down here just to get a, uh, you know, a feel for what's, what's going on. I'm going to go to one point assuming that a lot of people listening will be going into this with one point. Um, and then that's going to bring up all my units here. And you can see they are all broken down. So exa example, area three, it gives you your trophy potential, buck to doe ratio, public land percentage, which is huge. And we'll talk about that. But uh, down here, rifle, limited quota, type one, draw odds, 100%. And you'll see even non-resident regular, a lot of units with a hundred percent draw odds. Um, and you know, from what I hear, there are antelope all over Wyoming. Like even if you get a quote unquote bad unit, like I think the draw or the chances of success are still really good, especially if, um, if you're willing to walk a little bit. The other thing about Wyoming antelope on public land is access. That's the biggest thing is access to public lands. And we will talk about that. Um, but anyway, so what I did was I kind of, you know, this may not be the best way to approach it, but I sort of said to myself, you know, and so here's another filter. You can filter by alphabetical or draw odds or, you know, other things too, but, um, public land percentage is, is a good one to look at too. But so I'm going to go to draw odds. So that will put everything with a hundred percent draw odds first, and it'll go down as you go. And like I said, you, as you see, like, this is a lot of units with a hundred percent draw odds with just one point, which is cool. Um, so there is opportunity. Um, but for me, you know, I was kind of like, you know, usually the the higher the draw odds is one point that's going to correlate to probably a less desirable unit. Um, so I said, you know what, I'm going to just, 
I'm going to chop off all those, you know, why not at least try to take some chance here? And I'm going to start with these units that have a little bit lower draw odds. So I started down here with 103, which has got 68% draw odds. Then I went to 21, 46, and 34. So I started keying in on these units that were um, not like super hard to draw, but not like a guarantee either. Okay. And I, I just jotted those down. Um, you know, I put, I have, I put, I got my little legal pad here and I started taking some notes and just started looking at these units that were a little bit harder to draw knowing they're probably better. So then it's helpful to see. So I just said, okay, now let me see what I can do with the non-resident special. So again, I'm going here to go hunt. Um, on this filtering, let's do non-resident special because I knew that I was already, I already knew I was willing to pay a little extra uh, for that. So then let's just take unit 113, for example. That's one that I had, had identified earlier um, in the non-resident regular. Um, in the regular draw, in the type one, so okay, I gotta say this right here too. So there's type one and there's type two. All that means is there's two different seasons. So you take area, uh, unit 113, Salt Creek. It's got a rifle that runs from October 1st to October 31st. The draw odds on that for regular are 29%. Fairly low. Um, the second season, October 11th through 31st, um, you're just having to wait an extra week, basically, um, comes down to 100% draw odds. Um, with That's with regular, in the regular draw. So anyway, so that's another opportunity um, to get on a better unit. Um, you just have to wait a little bit, so the animals might be a little bit more picked through or whatnot. For me, I'm not really a trophy hunter, especially you know at this point. Uh, I'm looking for a good representative animal, and so for me, um, that's still a good option to go on that second season. So that's something to keep in mind too. And I will get, I will come back to that, but I wanted to show you that, um, in your non-resident regular area, 113 first season is a 29% draw odds. Now, if we go to special, that same unit, hundred percent draw odds. So you can see a 29% unit went to, or went to a, from the regular, draw now you know you're paying about double but you're going from a 29 percent draw to a hundred percent draw according to go hunt so that's significant so you're gonna it's gonna open up a lot of doors for you if you're willing to spend a little extra coin um for me where i am it's worth it that's something you gotta ask yourself and decide on your own but if you have the dough i would go ahead and get the special draw so anyway um Let's go back to how I picked my units. So, um, so I decided I'm going to do special. So then I started saying, okay, what are the units that I, but I, you know, even though I'm doing special, like I said, I still wanted to, some guys would go into the strat, go into the draw with a strategy of, I want to get a really good unit. If I don't draw, I don't draw. That's fine. I'll do it next year. That was not how I went into this. My mindset is I have a group of guys. We have the dates kind of blocked in our calendars. I've already talked them into it. We need to do this this year. Like this is part of my plan for this year. So I want to get in some good units in my um, application, but I need to draw something. I don't want to not draw anything. It's not worth the risk for me. Um, so that's how I went in. The mindset I went into this with was, I want to draw a tag, even if it's not the best. And if if you draw your first choice unit, that will take all your points. You'll quote unquote burn your points for that season. Um, if you get your second uh, choice, you retain your points, which is kind of cool. Um, but like I said, I'm trying to go into this with the mindset of I need to draw a tag and I'm only burning one point. So so I went to these units that I had identified um, in my first initial search with um, my non-resident regular as units that were um, tough to draw on regular with one point, 
But now in the resident non-resident special, for example, 113, um, we're like 100% draw. So that, that further kind of whittled down my choices here. So I identified, you know, some, some units that looked good to me. Um, and then, you know, and then I start breaking down the units. And uh, this is another resource that I use. Um, so on top of using Go Hunt, um, the Wyoming Game and Fish uh, website is actually really good. They have some really good information on there. And like I said, um, access is the biggest thing when it comes to hunting uh, antelope in Wyoming. So, um, you know, there are antelope kind of all over. The big thing is getting a unit with good access. So for that, I'm going to go over here to Google. I'm just going to Google Wyoming antelope unit map. Boom. All right. Now it's going to go to the Wyoming website which I got to give a shout out to Wyoming. I think they do a pretty good job with ease of use and good information. So here we are. This is every single unit, antelope unit, right? Um, on this kind of interactive map. And um, so I'm going to go, let's say 113, like we were talking about earlier. More info. Now this is going to give you pretty much everything you need to know. Um, available licenses, so you got buck any, which means it means what it means, any antelope, um, and that gives you type one. Like I said, that first season, October one to thirty one, and then type two, October eleven to thirty one. And if you remember, that type one was uh, in the regular thirty percent draw odds. And even without going to the special draw in the regular draw, type two was a hundred percent. Um, and then you'll notice on the map, um, anything blue or green is uh, state land or BLM is public land. So, and you will notice that a lot of these chunks of land here are landlocked, meaning you have to cross over private to get to them, which you will not be able to do without permission. Um, so that's something that you really got to think about when you're looking at these, um, at these maps, you like, you look at an area like 113, it's like, oh, that's a lot of public land. And it is. However, how much of it is actually accessible? Like if you wanted to get into this huge chunk right here, all this land, you're going to have to either get permission from a landowner or, I mean, you're gonna have to hike from like, I mean, that's not even like a realistic hike. You can't even really do that. Um, and there may be other ways of accessing that. I'm just looking, I'm just kind of giving you a general feel for things and to, to tell you that access is huge. So anyway, um, and as far as corner hopping goes, which means like, you know, if you have a patchwork, basically if you have two squares that meet on a corner like this right here, okay, both of these are public land. And if you listen to the po the episode I did with Trail Kreitzer, um, uh, it's kind of disputed whether corner hopping, which means going like, for example, from this piece of public to this over this corner. Some people will say you can do it. Some people say you can't do it. Apparently, it's not enforced. However, you can annoy some locals and it's just kind of generally frowned upon from kind of what I gather. So um, probably stay away from that. But anyway, um, going back to 113 here. Okay, it tells you your licenses. Now you can also get, you can also, when you're applying, apply for a doe tag as well, which is like 50 bucks, uh, which I did. I did not draw, but I, I'd recommend it if you're interested in meat and want to have a good time and hunt. I would apply for both. It's only 50 bucks for a doe uh, tag. Um, anyway, so then um, they'll give you their own drawing odds as well, which is good information. But what I mainly come to the Wyoming site is for this hunt area info and public access info. So it'll give you stuff about the vegetation, just general good information, harvest report. Um, but this is huge right here, public access info. 
So it's going to give you the percentage of public land on the unit and their estimation of the state of how good access is. For example, 113, access to public land is poor. So that's not what you like to hear. So what I did was, and this might be a little insane, but I had the time and I was having fun with it. So I geeked out and I made this handwritten spreadsheet, if you will. And I, I literally went through every single unit one by one um, and wrote down its rating, poor, good, fair, read the notes. Um, I put the percentage, I put um, whether I put, you know, the unit number, what the Wyoming Game and Fish said uh, as far as access, poor, good, fair, etc. I put the percent of public. I put notes, you know, like this one says high pressure. This one says most uh, are on private. Um, this one says good habitat. You know, different little notes that I gleaned from the Go Hunt info as well as the Wyoming Game and Fish info. And then success rates, um, which I kind of stopped tracking because they're all really high success rates and I'm more interested in access Um, because the success rate was going to tell you success rates for private as well and so I'm really more interested in access so anyway what I did was um, I I just went through the whole list and it took some time but then I identified which units I just crossed off anything that said poor access it's like I just crossed them off and so that narrowed it down for me um And then kind of cross-referencing that list with the stuff that said it had like decent access and then comparing it to the units that I had identified from the draw odds on Go Hunt that were decent, I kind of came up with um, my top top five to seven units um, based on access and draw odds. And I'm not going to tell you what they are. I'll let you figure that out. But the other thing you want to look at too in these units, which I didn't mention, is um, walk-in areas. So walk-in areas are just what they sound like. They're areas that are public land that are walk-in only. And um, I plan on checking out a... That was another thing that factored into which units I applied for. Because I would say, okay, this unit... um, you know, it, it says fair access to public land, but there's a 5,000 acre walk-in area. Um, and I would take that into account. Um, and so then, you know, once, once I, I figured out kind of my top five to seven um, units that I wanted to kind of key in on, then I'm going to go over back to Go Hunt. So once I've, you know, scrapped whatever it is, 110, 115 units that I know have poor access, you know, are super, super easy to draw for anybody, even with no points and just kind of chop those off the list. Now I'm just kind of honing my list down to, I got about seven units. I think that I identified as like, all right, these are my top seven. I'm going to really tri- you know, look in deeply. And when you apply, you can apply for three units, a first, second, third choice. And then if you look here on Go Hunt, it's got a full breakdown, snapshot, buzz. It's talking about, it's got photos, uh, terrain, um, vegetation, access, camping, really anything you'd want to know. Just some great tips. And then you can even also go down here, draw odds here again, uh, and you can ask questions. You can see even right here, I asked a question. and usually they get back to you. Um, so there's kind of a cool community even with Go Hunt where you can ask questions about units. How, hey, how's this unit doing? What's the crowding like? La da da. Um, so, yeah, so I just kind of did a deep dive on these top seven units. And I had like each, I, had, I went back to my thing and each unit had its own full page breakdown. Um, I, I charted the, the buck to doe ratio. Um, some units have different little rules like um like some you can you can apply for doe tags some you can't um some are buck only some are when you apply it's any antelope um so you can find that on the game and fish websites and stuff um and ask questions on go hunt if you want but then once i had um oh then i also charted the walk-in areas how much 
access was available through walk-in areas and other types of public lands or, um, you know, national forests or national grasslands or whatever. Um, and then kind of the, the general feel from like the, the stuff in go hunt, like this one, I just said, like, you know, I quoted go hunt here. Um, good hunt for mostly average quality bucks and heavy hunting pressure were kind of the two notes that I drew from there. So, you know, that's, that's pretty decent for me. Um, I'm not a trophy hunter, but so yeah, once that I'd whittled it down, then, um, that's when I actually connected with trail from go hunt. And as a go hunt insider, I'm not like guaranteeing you, I don't know actually what their rules are in terms of like actually talking to people on the phone and like one-on-one help. I'm assuming that they, that's something that they do because you know, I'm not anybody known or special, but I basically messaged trail Kreitzer on Instagram. I was like, Hey man, I'm an insider. Would you help me kind of figure out my antelope units? And he did. So, um, I'd say try calling the guys to go hunt or try emailing them. Um, try reaching out to them on social media even maybe. Um, but like I said, when you talk to somebody or, you know, if it's other people you might know that live in Wyoming or have hunted before or other guys you've heard on podcasts and stuff that are knowledgeable about this, even myself, uh, I'd be happy to talk to you if you want. Um, but nobody likes it when someone shows up to a conversation like, Hey man, um, where should I apply? And has done zero work. It's just like, come on, man, really, you're not going to do anything. So, um, and they might still help you, but I I knew when I came into this conversation with trail, I wanted to have it narrowed down to like at least five to seven units. Like, Hey, I did my research. These look good. What do you think about this strategy? And so, um, what, what we came, came up with was, and I told him, I was like, man, like I don't need an amazing unit. I want a good unit but I want to draw a tag. Like that's the main thing. I want to draw something. So he helped me put together a strategy, which was I applied for my favorite unit based on my research and what he knew of the unit applied for that as my first choice. And then my second choice, I'll just tell you was unit 113 um, in the first season. And then my second choice was unit 113 in the second season. And as I, as we kind of went over earlier, that second season has a much higher draw rate. So he's, he's saying, uh, he helped me or he told me that basically with this strategy, you have the best chance of getting a decent unit. And then if you don't get a decent unit, you're going to probably get a unit, you know, um, and 113 is supposedly, you know, not that bad either if you're willing to walk. So, um, so that's what we did. Like I said, I also um, applied for doe tags, um, and we, you know, applied as a party. I was the party organizer. That's very simple to do. I can't really show you how to do that on my screen because you just have to do it. Like there's no way to like fake do it right now and show you, but it's not hard to do. Um, you just go as a party organizer, and you know, if you call Wyoming Game and Fish, they're pretty responsive. Like they'll pick up your phone, and like I've done it a couple times, ask them questions, and they're really good about just answering your questions. So, don't be afraid to just pick up the phone and call Wyoming Game and Fish and talk to them. They're they're really helpful. You might be on hold for a little bit, but not not bad. Um, so let's see what else we got here. Oh, and then you know, and then once you do that, then you're just you're just waiting to see if you got drawn, and then. You know, uh, thank the Lord we got drawn for a first choice unit, uh, you know, decent unit. Like I said, uh, did not get the doe tag, but, um, in this unit, it's any antelope. Um, so that could be male or female. Um, but we just didn't get that extra doe tag. And then it just comes down to your travel and your lodging and stuff like that. You got to decide if you want to camp or you want to stay in a city. We are going to stay in a, a nearby town in an Airbnb, Um, and, uh, we just had fun planning everything. So, um, and that's, you know, that's kind of a whole nother topic there. And then, and then you got to get into e-scouting and just really, um, learning as much as you can about your species, about your, um, your unit, um, and go hunt has a ton of really good tools for that, as well as base map, um, Onyx, whatever you use. Um, so, and, and again, that's a kind of another topic too. Um, but 
if you want to hear more about specifics about like e-scouting and finding antelope past getting your tags, um, definitely check out the episode I did with Trail um, a few weeks ago or a few months ago. Um, it's on my YouTube or on the podcast. Um, I think it was episode 19 maybe. We kind of do a deep dive about antelope hunting specifically and e-scouting and what to look for and how, just everything about hunting antelope. So, but I wanted to give you guys some information about how I, coming from nothing, kind of whittled down the the units, which it seems overwhelming at first, but once you kind of just start chopping off huge sections of units that you know are less desirable and kind of honing that list down, it's really not that bad. Um, so... I hope this was helpful um, and I hope you guys will take my advice if it's something you want to do and just go ahead and grab your points now. They'll be on sale until the end of October and um, grab your points in Wyoming and Montana and start planning for next year um, and, and get your uh, get your applications in when it comes out and get out and enjoy a, an adventure. Um, you know, Get out there and do some antelope hunting. I heard it's uh, really fun. I'm looking forward to filming that trip, sharing that content, doing some podcasts about it, um, and uh, and just having fun with some family and, and checking it out. So, again, I hope this was helpful. Let me just make sure I didn't miss anything that I wanted to talk to you guys about. But um, I think that's pretty much it, guys. So... If you have any questions, don't be afraid to email me, hunter at thisishuntersquest.com. Um, and uh, you can shoot me a message um, on Instagram at Hunter McWaters or at the Hunter's Quest. Um, please um, leave me a rating and review on Apple. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. I hope this was helpful and um, we'll see you guys on the next episode. Thanks again for listening to the Hunter's Quest podcast and make sure you stay up to date on social media at the Hunter's Quest on Instagram and the Hunter's Quest podcast on Facebook and we'll have all kinds of photos and videos from my day to day as well as stuff from the awesome guests we're having on here. As always, I'm more than happy to connect with you guys if you have questions about hunting or spiritual stuff or gear, fitness. Whatever, just drop me a line in my DMs or you can email me at hunter at thisishuntersquest.com. If you like what you're hearing, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and leave me a rating and a review. That's really helpful. And don't forget to share with your friends. So stay tuned. Lots of cool stuff in the works. And I'm really excited to continue this quest together.